Hello, Shapurja. Uh, congratulations on becoming the national champion, the thing that you came here to do and you have done it. How does it feel? Uh, thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much, SBS India, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, of course, it uh, feels great. Like, uh, I wanted to become the champion coming here, and I have become. But uh, the only thing is that I made two draws here. Like, uh, I wish to score nine out of nine. But, okay, still I made two draws in two tough games. So, it still feels great. Okay. Which, is your, which, uh, which opponent gave you the toughest, toughest fight? Uh, I think among the opponents, uh, I made two draws. Both games were tough. Uh, mainly the tougher one was against Durga, Kartika, Lelapalli. Uh, that game was the tougher one. Like I had to struggle quite a bit. Uh, in the opening it was okay. In the middle game like I had str uh, to struggle to get a uh, fine position. And uh, then um, Towards the end game, like I also got a better position somehow, positionally better. I sacrificed a pawn, but uh, then in time pressure, I couldn't convert it, and it became completely winning for her. But then at last she blundered, and I got her knight, and so I had rook and bishop. But still, it couldn't help to win because she had so many pawns and rook. So it was at last a draw. And what is your most favorite game from the tournament? Uh, actually, like uh, the most favorite game, I would tell uh, against uh, Adya Gupta, the second seed who also came second in the penultimate round. I played with her uh, that game, and also uh, the round before penultimate round and the last round. Those games were also good. Great. Could you tell us what happened in uh, with the game with Adya? Yeah, sure. So I was white with Adya Gupta in this game. Adya is black, so I started with d4, d5. C4, B6, Knight C3, F6, this is just exchange variation of the curse bird setup, this is quite a common opening and uh, I had also faced her like two times, once in like in December only I had faced her two times, one in uh, a national under 15 and another time in national under 13. So in national under 15 uh, this same opening was played. And I managed to win that game, but though I had made some mistakes in the middle game. So what I mainly tried is to correct those mistakes which I made in that game and to improvise better versions and obviously to gain more knowledge on the opening. C6, E3. Like I wanted to play for the knight G2 variation. Bishop E7, quite normal. Bishop D3. Castle. Now obviously there are two ways to start, one is knight g2 first and uh, another is queen c2 first, so anyone works. So I played queen c2, knight bd7, now knight g2, so we have entered the knight g2 calls for setup. And now there is a wide range of options from rook 8 knight f8 and on, but she played 6, bishop h4, rook 8 Here like the main setup for white is f3 castle and then uh, trying to play for e4. Uh, first f3 or first castle both work, so I just played first castle. She went for knight f8, and now I played f3, and knight e6, bishop f2. Like, uh, this was also the earlier game in national under 15, uh, all the moves were kind of same. And in this position, like, uh, black tries to maintain the center with the pieces, while white tries to attack with the pawns. So rook a d1. b6 here uh, uh, the game in national under 15 till, till here was the same but there i had played e4 e4 is not that good because uh, like it is too fast to play e4 i should make some preparations first because the main thing is after d into e4 uh, d f into e4 there is knight g4 so f into e4 can't be played in the earlier mentioned game i had played knight into e4 but uh, that is uh, almost an equal position black has managed to equalize and white also has an uh, isolated queen pawn so to achieve what i want like capturing on e4 with the f pawn the move is bishop f5 here bishop f5 is uh, stops knight g4 so e4 will be the next move till this much was my preparation now she played bishop b7 
now I went for E4. Like here I was thinking whether to commit it fast or like wait for some time. But uh, after thinking for some time, I, I saw that that almost everything is ready. That uh, black uh, doesn't get any knight g4 kind of things. And like the center is mine and I can slowly play after the capture on E4. And if black doesn't capture, it's not so good because after E5, white gets much better attacking possibilities in the king side. So she took, I took. And now this position, black has a wide range of options. Like, uh, actually, my threats are somehow like d5. d5 is a threat, like, maybe not now, but somehow, like, d pawn can be a potential pass pawn. And another threat is to play e5. Like, it targets on attacking the king side, though it doesn't make uh, that much progress in the center, and it also gives up the d5 square. But still, it's also a decent possibility. And another one is just uh, improving my position with some kind of rook e1, king h1, knight g3 and preparing for the d5 or e5 breaks or just waiting for my opponent's mistake. So all the ways are possible here. So uh, after f into e4, like I think she was a bit puzzled here because this position actually is not so easy for black to handle if black doesn't uh, know about it properly. Like. Uh, like after even if I get e5 or d5 in a developed state of black then also it's fine for black like obviously this position is not much better for white this position is just slightly better for white so black can obviously hold perfectly with like uh, normal development but I think she was a bit uh, scared for the e6 knight she could have played knight f8 or bishop f8 like it, it is to make sure that rook into e6 comes but uh, she played bishop c8 I don't think this move is that good because first of all uh, like it blocks the rooks and uh, delays the development second like she was wasting a tempo she went bishop b7 first and then bishop c8 this also gives me extra time and third is that this makes d5 much easier like here i thought for quite some time d5 like uh, before playing these kind of moves like d5 and e5 we should think properly so as to like we don't commit anything and make some weaknesses but here like d5 was not that good but still after bishop c8 i thought that uh, she left uh, the control over d5 square so i tried to use it i played d5 but d5 is obviously not the best move here like i should just continue with normal development anyways she took it i took like this position is actually not that better but uh, this is really comfortable for me like this position like I also have some bishop h4 ideas then attacking the f6 knight then going d6 and making opponent capture g into f6. So like I was quite okay with this position. I quite liked it. She played knight c5. Uh, knight c5 was kind of the only active possible option. Now here uh, are a range of options. One is to just capture on bishop into c8 but then black goes rook into c8 which is like not positionally good, uh, so good for white first of all because it helps blacks to develop uh, one of his rooks like which is inside and actually it didn't come out for the whole game so like the, that is not so good and another one is just to play rookie one or something but I thought that my plan was just to uh, do something on f6 and I think there is not much danger here for white because there is no check along the a7 uh, to g1 diagonal so I went for bishop h4 like the threat of bishop h4 is to play uh, bishop c8, rook c8 or d6 or the move order can change a little bit also. And now uh, white is forcing black to capture on uh, f6 with the g pawn. So now I think this position is actually quite difficult for black to handle and it is quite natural to make mistakes in this position actually. But still I think she could hold with something even allowing g to f6 I think was better than this. She, I think, got a little bit tensed about bishop into f6 and she played g5 here. Like, g5 actually temporarily stops bishop into f6 threats, but it also permanently weakens the king side, which happened to be the fatal cause for the loss. Mm. So, like, here, just, like, I don't need to hurry about anything as she has already made some weaknesses. Like, these kind of positions are actually, like, uh, though it seems pretty easy for white to handle, but like actually it's easy but there are many ways to handle but that uh, problem is that finding the best way or deciding which way to play uh, takes lot of time like this happened to me also like though I didn't run into any time trouble because 
this was there are many options but still like uh, uh, it is a bit difficult actually in this type of questions often what happens like we don't know what to do like which option to choose from and later after thinking for a lot of time thinking for 30 minutes we end up giving an inferior option and then also getting in time pressure also playing some inferior moves and all losing or drawing better games so like i just thought like i should stay calm and just just focus on development like she has to make mistakes in this type of positions though it is quite hard to like uh, play as black but still i just played bishop f2 like i went to bishop h4 and made black commit a mistake so it's enough for bishop h4 and now bishop f2 like bishop f2 also protects the king from any kind of checks bishop f8 like bishop f8 the idea is to play bishop g7 and uh, like bishop g7 is played like to uh, make black maintain good safety in the king side so actually bishop f8 was played quite earlier like when i played bishop f5 she had actually played bishop f8 she now played bishop g7 so like bishop f8 bishop g7 was actually quite necessary because like otherwise she can't properly defend the king side because when the bishop is here like the bishop doesn't do any uh, potential walk and okay coming to g7 has one drawback that it allows any kind of d6 breaks d6 nb5 or d7 but still the black has to protect and it's also difficult for black to find an active option so she played bishop g7 now this position actually is quite comfortable i had one option of d6 here i thought for almost 20 minutes like uh, the options are bishop c8 and then black goes rook into c8 and then i play queen f5 queen d7 and all but that is uh, average like i don't think that maintains for white and another option is to just take on c5 like bishop into c5 weakening the pawn on c5 but uh, i thought about that but it gives up the bishop pair like i need to keep the bishop pair here because like i can get some potential attacks on the king side so like i decided to keep it like though bishop f5 is quite tempting bishop uh, bishop c5 uh, bc5 bishop c8 rook c8 and maybe knight g3 or something but still i think holding was better actually holding was also the best move i later checked like uh, it was also the best possible option but i didn't know during the game i was in a lot of confusion but still i felt like this was the best move bishop d4 like i played it bishop d4 has many tactical aims actually like one one of the plans for white is to pile up on the f file and uh, play some kind of bishop f6 bishop f6 bishop h7 and then f6 is gone another main weakness for black here is f7 pawn like if the knight moves some potential tactics can come on f7 like bishop h7 bishop g7 and then rook into f7 and then queen g6 and there are some mating nets created <clears throat> so uh, there are many worries for black actually but she had played bishop a6 like this move is uh, like reasonable because it just attacks on e2 but uh, the thing is like she is moving that bishop for the third time it wastes a lot of time uh, i just decided to play rook f2 here rook f2 the idea is obviously rook f1 and it also unpins the knight and uh, later knight g3 is also my plan just rook f1 and bishop f6 bishop f6 bishop h7 so anyways like now it's uh, she couldn't find what to give like i could understand she again uh, like moved the bishop to c8 she was now thinking that keeping the bishop on f5 allows some bishop h7 ideas so she again moved to c8 now her aim is to take on f5 but uh, i think here just normal moves are quite okay like she wants to take bishop into f5 and i thought that it would be preferable if i could capture an f5 with the knight so knight g3 take knight g3 after bishop f5 like bishop f5 if uh, black doesn't play it's quite good for white i have all those ideas i mentioned earlier if uh, black takes then also knight f5 and knight g7 and again f6 has uh, been in some quite some trouble and now the position is quite difficult for black to handle already uh, she came up with rook f8 rook f8 is to stop any kind of uh, attacks or queen g6 type things but still i think this kind of idea works pretty clearly i played rook d f1 the same idea just i wanted to take on bishop f6 bishop f6 and then bishop h7 um, but uh, like here it's uh, quite difficult for black to handle actually 
my threat is obviously bishop into f6 and okay it's like i don't see any good ways to defend it she went knight here just a thing knight d5 here doesn't work it has a nice tactic like after knight d5 we don't take knight d5 first like knight d5 we go bishop h7 king h8 bishop g7 king g7 now here uh, a nice move is there and this is rook into f7 rook into f7 and then queen g6 this follows i made black has to go this and anything like this this is clearly okay clearly winning for white so like this position i had calculated when i played knight g3 that knight d5 was the only hope for black but this was also not working she had to do something she played knight e8 but this also runs to the same kind of tactics like bishop h7 king h8 bishop g bishop is here yeah bishop g7 king g7 and now the problem for black is rook and f7 is still there and after rook and f7 queen g6 and the same thing comes so king g7 is not possible so black has to take knight into g7 but this of course loses the f7 pawn but i think there is a better way to uh, win the position i just played rook f6 rook f6 allows rook h6 and uh, there is i think absolutely no way to stop it she just went for knight e8 i played rook into h6 she went king g7 only way to stop the mate and then at last like there are many ways to win but i wanted to end it fast so like i just played rook g6 here rook g6 king h if king h7 is played white has rook into d6 the queen is gone and obviously the position is also gone and if f into g6 there is just queen g6 king h8 rook into f8 mate so in this position she had resigned i think there were no such mistakes from my side that's why i like this game and in this end like the ending question was is also quite nice to see and all those rook f7 tactics those were there so like this is like this game also helped me to gain a half point lead before the final round so it became quite like quite easy in the final round i think i would also become the champion if i drew but in the last round like i wanted to still go for a win as my target was to go uh, go with 9 out of 9 i also just wanted to win like let's see i just thought that uh, like if i win it's much better obviously 8 out of 9 so like uh, at last i managed to win that game so uh, this game helped me to climb up in the standings what an absolute fantastic game uh, it's great to analyze your games at this level because you understand so many variations so uh, once again many many congratulations i just wanted to ask that what is your plans for this year uh, actually like uh, for this year's plan i also want to become the world champion in my category that is under 14 I like I also came third in national under 13 so from there I uh, want to go to world and asian and from here also world school I think I will be getting the selection I don't know about this uh, my goal is to become the world under 14 champion this year and I I also want to cross 2000 alone by this year Great we wish you all the very best and all the very best for the tournaments that you are planning Thank thank you so much sbs india for this opportunity like lastly like um, it would be great like chessbs india has been doing so much for the chess community like uh, they have been uh, sending all kind of sponsorship programs like uh, currently my family is having some issues so i am having some coaching issues it would be great like um, if some sponsorship is here and it would be great to pursue my dreams here Lastly I also want to thank Chessbase India a lot and thank you so much sir thank you so much